Well, hello, my friends, and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about mindfulness and Qigong practice, and one little idea that you can use to actually help your mindfulness practice give you more results of that you're looking for. Now, you've probably heard about mindfulness and all, all its benefits because uh, it's become a little bit po more popular in the last few years, which I think is absolutely wonderful. We can see mindfulness-based practices in, um, in fitness centers and gyms and recreation centers. Lots of physicians and doctors and healthcare practitioners are recommending it because it is just actually that effective. And what I really like about it is that it's simple, it's empowering where you're actually, you're using your own resources to help yourself. So I absolutely love any kind of tool like that that is, is depending on your own system, your own body, your own mind. So we're going to talk a little bit about mindfulness. I know you probably know a lot about it already. But we're going to talk a little bit about it and this this little little fine detail that can actually really help your practice. So if we haven't met before, my name is Jeff Chand. I'm an acupuncturist, practitioner of traditional Chinese medicine, and Qigong instructor. And uh, I'm using a brand new little program here, and uh, we're doing this live so I can pull up a little uh, little little images like that. And I should be able to see some of your comments and pull and perhaps uh, uh, comment to you like this. Hey, look at that. This is the first time pulling in a comment. So if you have something to say, that's uh, please feel free to, and I will uh, try to address them as we go along. So if you're unfamiliar with mindfulness practice, it's basically the practice of being here and now. We try to take our mind out of the past and take our awareness out of the future and bring ourselves right here and right now. Now, there's many, many different ways of practicing mindfulness practice. Most of the time, it's, it's practice as a meditation. So these classes that I was talking about where you, where you, you go to a fitness center and, and uh, you practice mindfulness, it's often sitting comfortably. Everything's very calm and peaceful and we practice mindfulness. Quite often, mindfulness is going to be focused on the breath focused on bringing your attention back to your breath. So every time you go off into the future and thinking about, oh, what should I cook for dinner tonight? Or you go into the past and think, oh, why did I say that? I shouldn't have said that. Then we just bring ourselves back to our breath. And this is the core idea of mindfulness-based practice, is bring yourself back to your present through something. Now, commonly in these, in these type of classes and most traditions, it is the breath. The breath is so easy because we, we have it with us all the time, like a turtle carrying a shell. Always, we always have our breath, well, if we're, if we're breathing. We always have our breath so we can always come back to it. So it's a very good um, area of focus is to have our breath. Now we can also have um, uh, focus on the body. So different practices that focus on the body. Some of the most, most mindful people or people who experience mindfulness in a very, very strong way are actually athletes particularly people who put themselves at a little bit of danger or a lot of danger. So people who are into surfing or extreme sports where they're going down, I mean, skiing, not like this, but like this. You have to be so incredibly present. You have to make sure you're not missing a single detail. And when you do that, then there's this, sometimes can be this quite elating feeling. So people who practice sports, people who practice exercise, and people who are really focused in on something. I was watching somebody one time um, knit, um, knit crochet, I'm not sure which one it was, but with yarn and needles. And um, I could tell that she was really in the state of being so incredibly present with her body, and with her mind and what she was doing. So mindfulness practice really can be anything. So Qigong, of course, is a mindfulness practice because you're so present in your body, you're really present with your breath, and you're really present with your mind. Now, on the surface, if you if if you haven't done qigong before, it can look very simple. You can just stand there and just kind of move your arms, and it looks very gentle and easy, and it is, and that's the 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 nice thing about it. But as you get better at your qigong practice, you really try to be very very present on every single movement. So every single movement, every single time you take a breath and you and you do a movement. You have to be here, be now. I remember I had one teacher who was very encouraging to, to, um, to say, just try to do five good repetitions of a particular exercise. doesn't matter which exercise, just five. We're completely in, 
in your body. You're occupying your body and you're completely occupied in your, your breath. You're so aware and you're very, very clear with your intention. Your intention is very clear. Where, what are you thinking about? What, where is your mind focused? Very, very clear with your intention. Now, all you have to do is just five. And uh, he would say, do five, then you can go home. And uh, so there are many times that I did five. Well, I tried to do five and it would take an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. And uh, it was very, very difficult. But practicing mindfulness during Qigong is a skill. We get better at it as time goes on. So Qigong practice most definitely is a very good mindfulness practice. And in, I'm a little bit biased, but I actually think it's one of the, the best ones to do. Because sometimes maybe we've been sitting all day long or maybe we've been home and, and uh, sedentary or working at a desk or working at work. We uh, drive to work, go to work and sit, drive back home and we're still sitting. So we kind of feel a little bit restless, like we need to move our body around. And then so when you try to do a sitting practice, a very formal sitting mindfulness practice, it can be, get a little bit difficult. So when we get our body moving with a little bit of mindfulness, like in Qigong, it's an excellent combination. So, uh, so I'm, I'm a little bit partial to Qigong, but I'm, of course, a little bit biased. But sitting practices are also great too, because we can practice a little bit of Qigong and we feel like, great, my body feels calm and relaxed and peaceful. My mind is kind of feels, felt like I've shaken out the cobwebs. Now I can sit. And perhaps sometimes you can go a little bit deeper into a mindfulness practice after you've done a little bit of activity, then go into, um, into a sitting practice. So, um, so Qigong practice is a mindfulness practice and anything can actually be a mindfulness practice as long as you bring yourself into the present. So I'm just going to check in the, uh, into the comments section here, see what you're, what you're talking about here. And, um, just want to say a quick hello. And I believe, uh, oh, great insights. Okay. Um, I think Ag Agnes was here a little bit early and she said that she was, um, uh, practicing and feeling lighter after each video. That's so great. That that feeling of lightness. That's what. That's really a good sign of your your um, method of um, of chi flow. This. Oh, that's me. I said that's so great to hear. You're, um, and Jessica. Well, thank you very much. I'm not sure, but I think you're amazing as well. And uh, what is mindfulness? Well, we. I think we spoke a little bit about that. And this is a good answer. Um, is it different? than intention given at the beginning of Qigong practice. So that's a, actually a very good question because um, is mindfulness different than intention? It's a great question. We can spend a long time talking about that. So intention in Qigong is very important. We, um, it's not just like meditation where it's passive. We want to actually bring our intention into our practice, our Qigong practice. So being conscious and being aware of our intention is a mindfulness practice. So it's kind of a roundabout answer. So yes, intention is a mindfulness practice because we're bringing ourselves into the present. Now, keep that in mind when we said that uh, there's one thing, one little detail that will will help. Um, okay. Uh, and Reifer, I believe, uh, said Qigong and mindfulness were instrumental in helping with deal with uh, depression and anxiety. Uh, I found both excellent lifestyle adjusters. That's excellent. Yeah, especially when it's your lifestyle. And hello, and thank you. And uh, it helps me calm down. I'm sure that means um, uh, mindfulness. And aloha, thank you for making this so easy. Great, that's wonderful. Well, that's that's kind of fun. I've I've uh, I've never been able to do this before. Move move comments around and see what you're seeing and see. Yeah, this is great. I I, I think this is such a wonderful time that we're alive here that we can connect like this virtually. I know you're there. So what is the one thing I, I'm trying to mention to keep in mind during mindfulness? So when we see images, if you, if you Google uh, mindfulness, I, did, I, I was trying to figure out the history of mindfulness in the West. I'm familiar with it in the East, but I was trying to figure out the history in the West. And it, um, it seems to be about the 70s or so when it first appeared here. And now it's used so, so, um, so, so widely. But um, when I was looking at uh, uh, some of the information, you always see these images of people very relaxed and very peaceful, sitting in the lotus position, sitting up on a mountainside, maybe um, in the Himalayas, and very peaceful and relaxed. So this is where we can get a little bit, um, little bit um, uh, off track. 
The mindfulness practice doesn't actually make you feel better. Mindfulness practice doesn't make you feel happier. It doesn't get rid of sadness. It doesn't get rid of uh, anger. It doesn't get rid of anything. I forgot to show you my list here, but there's um, there are many things that uh, mindfulness is very good at, at doing. But mindfulness doesn't do any of this. So what am I saying? The only thing mindfulness, mindfulness practice does is it helps you be present. And when you're present, then your body, then your mind, then all your inner wisdom and all your resources have the opportunity to work. So mindfulness practice on its own doesn't need to make you feel calm and relaxed. Guided imagery or meditation or uh, self-hypnosis, those kind of things can relax your body. Progressive body scans, that can relax your body. But mindfulness practice doesn't necessarily make you feel better. I remember years ago, I had a, uh, I was seeing a patient who was um, uh, a very, very hardworking, very intelligent man, but he was always very wound up. And he said he tried everything. He tried mindfulness practice, but it didn't work for him. And what he was saying it didn't work for him is because he said that he was mindful and all he realized was all of the different thoughts he had going on, all the different worries, all the different frustrations he had. So, so it didn't relax him, but it actually did what it's supposed to do. It made him aware. Sometimes I think about mindfulness practice like going to that uh, one closet and opening it up and taking everything out. You take everything out, you know, okay, you just usually throw things in there and, and try to ignore it. Well, mindfulness is kind of taking out the taking everything out there, and now you kind of kind of you can see exactly what's going on. You can see the thoughts, you can see the emotions, you can see the old thoughts, you can see the the worries for the future. So this is what mindfulness can do. So it doesn't necessarily by pulling everything out of the uh, closet, it doesn't necessarily make the closet any cleaner. It just exposes everything that's there. But then once we get everything out, then we can start putting all the pieces together. So this is the purpose of mindfulness, not to make you feel anything, not to make you feel happy or sad or anything at all, but just to help you be here and be now. And I don't know if you know anybody who is, um, who's never quite here, <laughs> like you're talking to them and they're, they're thinking like, okay, after I'm done talking to you, I have to go and meet this person or I have to put the turkey in the oven or um, so they could be lost in the future. And there are other people who were lost in the past. You're, you're talking to them, but they're, they're kind of distracted with maybe what happened just last week or if they've had a rough day and they were thinking about that. Or in many cases, people are thinking like, oh, I remember when I was a uh, super athlete uh, 25 years ago and, and they're, they're lost there. So mindfulness practice brings you right here, right, right now. And in doing so, though, when your body, when your mind has the resources, then you can start to unwind some of the problems, some of the tensions. You can see clearly. You can use your own inner wisdom to, to help yourself. So that's the one thing to try to remember is that mindfulness won't make you feel anything. It will just bring you here and bring you into the now. And when we do that, then we can re rely on our own resources. Now, just like with the man I was uh, speaking about earlier on, he, he didn't necessarily unwind his tensions after one session of mindfulness practice, uh, it took a little bit of time. He did eventually go back to it and he actually started doing Qigong as well. And he, in time, he started to learn to realize, oh, okay, I'm, I get a little bit worked up about this. I can calm down. I can use the skills that I have. I can breathe. I can go for a run in his case. Uh, running was really helpful for him. So that's what I always like about Qigong and mindfulness practice and, um, and Qigong and sort of this approach is to find your way. Find the way that works for you. If you've always been a big swimmer in the past and, uh, and you, you resonate and gravitate towards that, then start swimming. Go back to swimming. If you like being in nature and you just like, uh, what's this term, force bathing and lying underneath a tree and absorbing all the energy from the, uh, these are our deciduous friends, then make, make that part of your practice. Maybe you like to um, socialize and you can, that helps you feel mindful. Or maybe you can just sit in a quiet, um, calm, still room and that helps you feel still. So whatever your way is, you just try to find it and try to find what works for you.
Um, I just for forgot um, uh, that I was going to show you some of the benefits. You already know this. I'm just going to quickly go, go through this. These are the benefits of being of mindfulness practice. It can help lower your stress, your anxiety. It can help reduce anger, frustration, improve your sleep. It can decrease loneliness. It can reduce negative feelings. It can improve your attention. It can help you manage uh, chronic pain. And it can help with uh, depression. So there's so many different benefits from it for, with, uh, with mindfulness practice. So whether you're practicing Qigong already, you can just bring that idea, be here, be now, into your practice. Every single breath. Do five really good repetitions. See if you can do that. Um, and if you're, if, you, if you're not doing Qigong yet, maybe someday you might give it a try. And then, um, uh, but in your everyday activities, choose an activity. If you're standing in a grocery store lineup and you're just waiting, you can see, oh, there's five people in front of me. It's an excellent time to practice mindfulness. If you're stuck in traffic, there's another great time to practice. If you're just walking in nature, you're not necessarily in a hurry and you're just, just walking. That's another great time. All right, so I'm just going to check back into your comments here. And um, uh, and I see from Lynn, so I saw golden scrolls during my last Qigong meditation. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, Qigong with uh, practice with uh, your videos allows me to start my day in a very positive way, even during these uh, unsettling times. Thank you. Well, you're very welcome. And I, and I'm, and, and I, uh, we put together this the positivity series. I don't know if you, you if you haven't discovered it yet. It's um, uh, a series of I think six six or eight videos or so, including the immunity qigong routine. And I wanted to put that out there because we we need to follow the advice of all the experts, but we also need to strengthen our own resilience. And qigong practice is is um, is great. Um, and uh, thank you for being uh, descriptive when you give instructions for these exor for exercises for your videos. Oh, you're welcome. It's always a fine balance of trying to be descriptive, but not overly descriptive to make too much noise. Um, oh, thank you, Lawrence. That's very nice. Uh, can mindfulness cause anxiety? Uh, but that's, uh, I think maybe as we were going through this, we probably talked a little bit about that. It's just that it's pulling everything out of the closet. So if there's a little bit of um, the feelings of anxiety beforehand, then that might just pull it out of the closet. But mindfulness-based therapies are um, actually a, a treatment for uh, for anxiety but of course do consult with um, somebody who knows you best to give you a more accurate answer but sometimes it can reveal anxiety when it's there and a lot of times though in time it gives you the tools to help dissipate and relax that tension that's there um, my low back is is better uh, from chili oh that's wonderful um, I try to incorporate visualization of energy and flow when doing Qigong. How does this relate to mindfulness and intention? I think that is mindfulness and intention is, is uh, the visualization. That's what your mind, that's the object that your mind is focusing on. Now, you could be focusing on your nose or you can be focusing on the warmness in your fingers and your, or the warmth in your belly. But following the, uh, the, the, the flow of qi or the flow of energy in the body, that is your form of, um, of mindfulness practice. Wonderful. Thank you, Renee. Um, breathing helps me be in the present moment. Excellent. That's wonderful. Um, I am American, but I lived in Asia. You bridge a gap for me with your instructions. I have some level of knowledge, but uh, you know how to speak to us in both worlds. Thank, a great help. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. That 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 really that that. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, um, I I find. I'm trying to bridge the gap for, from, from sort of the, uh, uh, my understanding of things and, and uh, sort of what I've been learning from teachers, what I've learned from teachers, because um, um, most of them spoke only Mandarin. And so there was, I even now have to think back, what does that mean, what they were saying? And so bridging that gap is, is something that I really try to do. And, uh, um, and, and I, yeah, I, I'm, thank you very much. That was very nice. Um, Yo, I'm never quite here. That's uh, that's fair. And Martin, I practice both Qigong and meditation because they both present 
different types of feeling present. Been meditating for 30 years, Qigong just a few months. So happy to have found it. I completely agree with you. It's just a different quality, a different type of awareness and being present. And uh, it's like going to, um, uh, maybe it's a bad, bad analogy, but going to a buffet and you see like a sal all these different salads and they're different flavors and different tastes and they all satisfy you just in different ways. Um, all right, I, I live on Qigong. It has turned my life around physically and mentally. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's great. Uh, the way of conscious mindfulness, wonderful. Wow, thank you very much. Uh, the breathing is where I practice uh, mindfulness. Um, yes, hello and good morning. Good morning. Oh, yes, uh, Jeffrey and all, I like your simple, uh, sincere, simple, and clear explanation gem uh, and demonstration. Thank you. We, whoops, you're very welcome. I'm sorry, I'm not very good at this uh, this whole system here. I'm just learning it myself, but... Uh, uh, Yes, I just I, I part part of part of me wanted to acknowledge that um, I so much appreciate when when um, people meet, leave comments and they they say hello and they say this has helped me because um, part of the way personally that I I learn qigong and practice qigong and and try to learn to to share qigong with the world is by watching people and observing people and um, seeing what works for them. In my clinical practice, I've had the amazing opportunity to meet so many different types of people and to see what actually works. And when I see people in classes, I also get to, to see that as well, to see, um, yeah, this is working for them. Like, oh, oh, no, that's too dangerous for them. And so this is how, how um, we all learn together. And uh, in the last little while with um, with the community and with the this online platform this is it's been a way of, of trying to trying to learn through very simple words that people are saying and so um, I find it endlessly fascinating and I and I'm really appreciative of, of the descriptions and and what you find oh this helped that's this is what I prefer like it really really does help me so that's that's why I wanted to try to figure out how can I how can I interact with people a little bit more here on YouTube um, yes um, Wonderful. You love the flow. Uh, can, can Qigong help with uh, diabetes and high blood pressure? Um, of course, you know that there's um, type 2 and type 1 diabetes and both of them and high blood pressure. And all those conditions do primarily need to be managed by your family doctor first. But um, having said that, yes, it, uh, Qigong can help because you're calming down the nervous system, you're breathing deeply, you're relaxing the blood vessels, you're building a little bit of fitness, you're building your breath capacity, your lung capacity, and that's all going to be helpful for all these different aspects. A lot of times people can manage um, uh, blood pressure, either low or high, through different types of breathing exercises, qigong and meditation. But always, it, you uh, everybody always has to be making sure that they, they uh, are under doctor supervision. So um, I'm going to uh, wrap it up here. I was uh, I I thought I was going to do this for about uh, five to eight minutes, but we went over that a little bit. But um, if you are interested in in learning more about mindfulness practice, um, there's an upcoming uh, uh, online retreat called the Magical Mindfulness uh, Online Retreat, and uh, I was um, I was graciously asked to to uh, to be a part of it, and and uh, I did an interview and um, talk a little bit about Qigong and some of the ideas uh, behind uh, behind Qigong, and um, just a very relaxed conversation. But I see that there are probably twenty some. Um, experts on mindfulness and different approaches to it. So mindfulness and art and in, in journaling and creativity and in counseling and lots of different ways. So I'll leave a description in, in the, or leave a link in the description below where you can click on the link. It'll take you to a page and you can sign up and there's no charge for it. And uh, I believe m my interview was on, um, is going to be on June the 4th. That's Thursday, June 4th. But I think, um, they will be available for replay, I think. So yes, it's called the Magical Mindfulness Online Retreat. And uh, the link is below. And if you are really curious about um, getting like uh, really diving into the Qigong practice, do come join the community. It's a it's an online library of many different practices uh, that are not found on YouTube. And uh, we um, uh, we're always adding to it, and we, we've been focusing a little bit more on mindfulness in this last little while, but we call it the community, so it's the community 
of Qigong, so community. So you can come join, see if you like it, see if, if it appeals to you, and uh, I'm sure uh, you'll, you'll find a practice that resonates with you. So thank you all so much, um, so much uh, for, for joining me here live, and thank you for watching on the replay and for sharing and, and sharing your thoughts and your feelings and, 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 uh, and liking. So uh, we'll see you next time. In the meantime, keep practicing, try to find your flow, try to find your version of Qigong, your version of uh, mindfulness practice. Thank you so much for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.